Hi everyone, Raquel here from Scrap Cozy. Today I'm sharing with you how to make these coasters with a waterproof finish using my newest stamps and stencils that I've designed for Paper Artsy in the June 2018 release, all tea related. This is a long video, so grab a cup of tea and enjoy. Okay, let's get started. My first step is going to create the coasters and for that I'm using different pieces of scrap well, not papers, but uh, great cardboard that I had from other projects. And then I'm using a Distress Ink ink pad to kind of define uh, the shape of them. And I'm going to do six of them. So just with a pencil, I'm marking those lines. And in case that you don't know, an ink pad of Distress is three by three inches. So if you don't have it, you can just do it on this size if you like it speeding up the process just until I get everything drawn and then it will be time to cut and to cut I initially started with that finger um, craft knife which for different details uh, it's very useful but not for cutting straight lines and such a big thick <laughs> cardboard it's too thick really and it was taking me ages. This is speed up, by the way. And I'm just putting it here so then you know that it's not easy to use. And actually, after all that effort, I didn't finish. So I moved to a bigger craft knife and just by uh, passing it like 10 times, because it's very thick, um, you kind of get it done. And then for the corners, I'm just using the Tim Hall scissors to cut them. And they cut perfectly. Next step is optional. I used a sanding block just to make sure that the edges were okay and they didn't have any impurities, let's say. Now it's time to cover those grays and I will be using the new paints by Paper Artsy designed by Corne Franich. So let's start with the first one, Eggshell. This is like a light cream, very nice. And I'm selecting two of the same color of uh, cardstock and I will be covering them. I'm using a piece of cut and dry foam because I want no brush strokes in my surface. I want a very smooth surface as much as I can. And I'm giving like two to three layers on each side. And you can see that you don't need a lot of paint on it. And you just cover both sides and it will be ready to go. Just take your time. It takes time really. <laughs> but it's okay. For this first color, I'm not, not skipping any scene, basically, just for you to know how long it took me to more or less cover it. I know it's a speed up, but you can see that I'm kind of giving three layers to each side. And once I'm satisfied, I'm going to jump to the next color, which is Vintage Lace. This is a lovely color. I like it very much. It's like a very soft pink. I think Paper Arts used to have it already in the past, and they've released it now again with Courtney's color. So it looks very nice. Here again I'm giving several layers, but I'm cutting it out. I mean you've seen already the first one, so you know more or less what it needs to be. That you get a very um, soft finish and uniform color. And once it's there, then you just jump to the next one. For the next color I'm selecting like a bluish greenish, which is sea glass. It's so nice, I like it very very much. So again, I'm just using the same sponge dauber and I'm applying it on top. So again, just make sure that you give several layers until all the grays are out and you basically cover everything. And now it's time for stamping. Since I have a lot of stamps still related, I'm just putting them on the table to kind of decide where I use what. And for instance, the postage stamp is so big that it will cover two of the different um, coasters and then I have many mugs so more or less that will be the different composition that I use and the different elements so I started free-handed by putting that big stamp over there using archival ink potting soil because I want something that it's waterproof but after this first attempt I was like oh dear what if it doesn't happen okay and it doesn't stamp okay in the first place 
So, well, you lift it and you get what you get. And then I thought, okay, let's use the stamping platform, maybe. So then I have another chance to re-stamp if I need to. So for the different other coasters, I'm going to use that, the stamping platform, just for a peace of mind and to be able to re-stamp if needed. And the way to use um, the gray board with it is if you place the magnets on the edges of those coasters then you'll be able to well make sure that the coaster doesn't move and you can re-stamp easily so I'm just inking it up and then pressing down this is one of my favorite stamps that collage is so nice you may already know but if you don't well all those uh, different cups are China from home I mean <laughs> they are the normal mugs that I used to have tea or coffee in the previous one because the previous one is very tiny and yeah I like them very much so I decided to create a stamp so you can have it here I'm stamping and then masking because I'm going to stamp all the images on top and that's to pretend that for instance this tea leaf it's hiding and it's coming from behind so I'll do different stampings so in a different position and then I'll do a little bit more by I will be putting there a lace underneath so I'm basically creating my own collage and it's good because I mean the different stamp set have different elements so you can create actually that your own collage for yourself I'm freezing the images so you can see the detail of the different designs that I finally came up with so now I'm using another mag the ones that I have at home, they are not plain, they have different flowers and so on but I decided to put them plain so you can basically decorate them if you want and doodle on them if you like so for this one as well, I'm also masking it and I'm deciding which element to put instead of that, I'm going for, to go for the tea cloud and another lace so I'm just cutting that over there and then I'll stamp it really is very easy to stamp with a stamping platform I mean I like it very much I I go freehand now after using it but not that often because apart from actually knowing where you're stamping it's also very very easy to press down and you don't need to do a lot of effort you can even just stand with all your basically uh, weight on top of it and then that's it you don't need to do more, much more and you don't need to have a firm hand to do it you just press down and it will not move the image will not smear so that's the next collage and then another one this is also one of my favorites the cup with the spoon that one is already a collage with different laces and so on I'm incorporating also the butterfly and this one I think is my favorite and you see you have the chance to re-stamp again and now the image is sharper so I decide to also mask that and I'm cutting out the pieces very quickly <laughs> because I'm also going to stamp on the back something and then it will seem that it's behind all those elements so again the tea cloud and there I'm not bothered if it's not super detailed because it's in the background and it actually looks nice that it's not perfectly stamped that darchling that you could see there and the final piece I'm just doing freehand I love this one okay so here are the six designs you like them so far? Now we'll add some color and yes, it's satin glaze that we will be using with infusions. So we start with the golden sands and we'll also use olive tree, a green, sunset beach, which is kind of reddish, slate blue, a blue obviously, and that's it. So let's go ahead and do it. So a bit of satin glaze and a tiny bit of infusions, mixing it very, very well. So the walnut dissolves very well and we get a uniform color and then I'm working one color at a time 
to color all the images that in my mind should be yellow and well it seems that yellow is my favorite color because with that tiny bit amount of infusions that I've prepared I don't have enough <laughs> and also I want the mugs to actually be from one color I don't want them to have um, blank let's say or be um, of the color of the background so I decide to paint almost all of them in yellow just to give it a pop and to stand out from the behind so of course I'll run out of golden sands eventually and then I'll mix a bit more so on the flowers there I'm adding yellow but then afterwards you'll see that I'll add a touch of a different color and you don't need to be very careful on this because I mean it's a translucent paint if you go beyond the edges it's not really important and you will not see it that much unless you put lots of infusions and then the color is very very vibrant then you would notice it but if you go mild it should be fine and when I can I try to follow more or less the shape of the mug meaning if it's curved I'll try to curve it a little bit so then may just I don't know give the traces of the brush a little bit of that volume if that makes sense <laughs> and now I'm adding there some background yellow and once I'm done which will be hopefully soon then I'll jump to the next color and to jump to the next color I normally clean my brush with a paper towel or now with a cloth and then afterwards I put it into water so the cloth or the paper removes all the first excess and then the water will remain a bit um, clean a bit longer <laughs> so that's it and once I dry my brush then I'm ready to move on to the next color again satin glaze and a little bit of infusions and mixing it very very well so now it's a turn off the cream and if for whatever reason you see that your color is too light and you like more vibrant just add a bit more but in my case I just wanted a subtle touch because even if you think that it's nothing if you see the images they are starting to come up and popping out so I like to go very light on these colors you see that one of the stamps is the actual tea plant again so you have the tea plant in small version and in big version I love that <laughs> and also the, the stamp that it's a square on the right of the one that I'm now painting so that one the flowers from there were used in the other composition I mean one of the collages uses those as well that collage so those flowers close by to the mug are the same ones as the um, the ones that were in the poster stamp and all those butterflies I don't know why I see them blue <laughs> so blue there you go just to remind you the colors that I've used so far so the yellow one was golden sands the green was olive tree and the, the one that I'm using now which is the blue is slate blue those are my go-to colors but of course I mean you can have a look at the 24 colors that you have in the in the um, infusion range and of course select whatever you want now I'm moving to the um, sunset beach which is the pink and I started with a very light color so I'm painting many flowers in this color and the berries and other details here and there mostly flowers so I'm painting some of the lace as well and I'm adding a deeper color on the center of the flowers and more or less we're done and of course well this is not very vintage yet so I'll add a vintage touch in the next step so with some distress ink vintage photo I'm adding some ink to the edges and now they'll become well vintage if you compare yeah <laughs> so I'll do the same on all of them adding that border of vintage look and once I finish I'll work on the back and at this point I'm really starting to like that front part of the coaster 
then I wanted to do also something in the bag to use my stencils because now we've used only stamps so then for the bag that you will see that it's super clean and white <laughs> I'm going to do well something similar also vintage but in this case with the different stencils and I'm selecting for each one of them the different stencils that I will be applying and once I have it in my mind clear then I'm going to select the same ink that I use for stamping but it will be for applying the ink through the stencil so again potting soil and then a sponge dauber and circular motion both in the ink pad and then on the stencil and if you load the sponge dauber enough and very well you will finish very quickly but if you just dab it slightly well it can take you ages <laughs> to complete this okay so just make sure that you rub it on on your ink pad to load it very well with ink and you can see that this is something fast I know it's a speed up the video but still it's something very fast if you do it with enough ink oh the tea cloud looks so nice I really like this one you'll see the result it's one of my favorite bags and for that one these stencils have three different patterns so you can repeat them all the way through so basically you would start with one end and then once you're done you reposition make sure that the figures match so you can do a seamless pattern and as big as you want so I'll do the same with the three patterns on three different coasters and it's very simple to do I really like this technique because it's super simple and you finish super quickly and I don't know the bags are very nice to me now and it's it comes a point where it's like do I like more the front or the back of the coasters okay so just finishing the last one with that kind of floor the lease or whatever pattern <laughs> you think that is and we will be done on this step but now of course they are not vintage enough for me so I'll add the same touch as for the other ones so vintage photo distress the regular ink I'm applying it through the edges and I'm not doing it like evenly it's just adding some touches here and there because I want to keep some white spaces there because it adds more interest otherwise well the color becomes all one way and you don't want that you kind of want to add some texture and some volume so just add some touches here and there and I think I like them more now so the next step is coating this and making it waterproof so we're using some ultra thick enamel embossing powder and then some powders from Seth Apter the vintage big swags to add even a more vintage look so with a VersaFine ink I cover the entire surface of the coaster and then using some thongs that's very important I'm going to heat set that it's going to become very warm you don't want to really hand it with your hand because you may burn yourself okay so be careful and here I'm using some tweezers which are great because they have the reverse opening oh first some of the set powders on top this is the first layer we are going to apply two layers on each side okay so I'm working on, on two different coasters at a time and I'm waiting for one layer to be done until I do the next one so I keep on switching from one to the other okay back to the tweezers the tweezers that I'm using are um, how is it you press them then they open and when you release they close so it's perfect because they have this reverse system that you don't need to do any effort to hold your stuff so I like this very much these are my go-to tweezers if I lose them oh I think I'm gonna have to find more so I'm always looking for them they came in a pack uh, of four or five but I always use this one so once you're ready you apply the second layer of both you um, the UT and also some sprinkles of the vintage week big swags and on the second layer you'll see that it starts thickening and getting um, flatter you want a smooth coat that it's well perfectly plastic because you want basically a waterproof coaster right and also if it's smooth it will not have any bubbles and the surface will be well very clean let's say so that's why I'm putting like two layers of UT 
If you were using embossing powders, the thinner version ones, then I would suggest that probably you put three layers. Just check how it is, I mean, you will see if you like the surface or you need more thickness. Just play around with it. So I'm doing that. And once the other a coaster is more or less cooled down, then I finish that corner and add the second layer there. So basically you work on three parts of the coaster and leave one corner and done. But it will be okay because once you apply the uh, UT at the end, it will merge and melt itself together. You will not see the joint. And it's very nice. Well, I like the effect. So now I'm working on the other side of the coaster. And again, I'm leaving one corner without anything and melting it. So it becomes shiny and so on. I really like when, well, the embossing powders melt. Some sprinkle of the vintage big wax. I think I'm being too stingy here. <laughs> I should have put perhaps a bit more. But it's like, oh, if I use if I use it here, it's like I'm gonna miss it, right? So I wanted to keep it for longer. <laughs> but now that Seth and, well, uh, they have released the bigger jumbo jar. Then I think you get that one and then it's okay. It's okay if I use more. So now I work on the other part of that stamp set. I mean of that coaster. And again, I work on three parts of it, leaving that corner undone. And do that. So just work on two at a time. And then while one becomes, um, well, uh, cool down, that then you can use your thong to actually pick the coaster from the opposite side and work on the remaining corner. Then you can just swap it and that's it. So this is very cool, very warm, but then yeah, you just go there and do the other, the opposite corner and it will melt and it will be all right. And while the UT is still hot, you can apply the second layer. You don't need to reapply the Versamark ink on top. So this is already a very long video. I'm not going to torture you and see how I do this in the six different coasters. So I'm just showing the first two. And you saw there that I have a line marked because it was too hot, but you remelt it and then it's gone. So that's very good. And if you think that you need a bit more of stickiness, just apply a little bit more of of that ink and apply the embossing powder and that's it okay so this is the idea and now as a final touch for the edges I will make them gold so basically I'm just putting the edges on Versamark ink and then I'm applying some wow embossing powder in gold in three of the four edges and then melting it down again with the heat tool and it will become gold basically. And once it it cools down, then I'll work on the remaining on the remaining edge. And don't do this at home. I'm not using tweezers and I was burning myself, okay? So really use tweezers. Don't burn yourself. So this was the last coaster that I made and you can see the room that edge in gold I gave two layers should be more than okay and now I'm showing you the other five so this is how they look and they're really thick it's like a piece of plastic so perfect for to use as a coaster it's perfectly fit for a purpose <laughs> so I'll show you some pictures and see if you like the final results it was a very long video, so thanks very much for watching until here, if you did. <laughs> if you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss anything. Even click on the ring, bell button, whatever, if you want to, well, realize when the next video is coming up. And of course, leave me a comment if you want to know anything about it or if you have any questions. And also, you can tell me which one is your favorite, if you have one. 
there are many pictures at this end of the video because I didn't know which one to put and which ones to avoid. I really liked them all and I thought, okay, let's put them and well, if you don't like it, just skip it, okay? But here are all for you to enjoy and thanks very much for accompanying me. And nothing else from me. I'll just leave you a video of a very old project that I did. Also like not related to the tea but basically to the coffee so a useful thing that you can do for home as well it's a tea holder capsule for Nespresso I hope you enjoy it it's very old but still I think it's a very nice project well thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one bye